Hello students, today I am here with my new lecture of constant max gearbox and I will talk about the working principle and easily you will understand that how this gearbox works, what is the mechanism behind it. So first of all, I would like to show you my slides so that you will judge what you are going to learn in this video. Okay, so coming back. As we know <clears throat> that gears are used to transmit power with required angular velocity and torque to the driven from driver to the driven and a particular gear outputs a particular torque and angular velocity in case we are engaging our car gear suppose it is first gear then for first gear there is a particular amount of torque and particular amount of angular velocity and if a bigger gear I mean in terms of diameter drives a smaller gear by meshing the angular velocity of a smaller gear increases if bigger gear drives a smaller gear, then angular velocity increases, however, torque reduces. And if a smaller gear drives a bigger gear, of course, by meshing, the angular velocity of bigger gear reduces while the torque increases. This we know. Now, in constant mesh gearbox, what happens? All the gears, means first, second, third, fourth, whatever the number of gears are, all the gears are in meshing condition. Either small gear is running the bigger gear or bigger gear is running the smaller gear. All the gears are in meshing condition. Okay. To transfer the power of a particular gear to the driven shaft, a dock clutch is used. Means all the gears are in machine condition, a dock clutch is used. The power of which gear combination we want to transfer to the driven shaft. Okay. So this is a schematic diagram. You can see that this is the engine shaft. The power from the engine reaches here. Then there is engine shaft fixed gear. Okay. Then there is lay shaft fixed gear. You can see this is lay shaft. This is also gear. So this gear can drive this lay shaft gear. And this is the lay shaft. Ultimately, this power is transmitted to these two gears. I am taking an example of three gear system over here. So the power from the engine reaches this green colored fixed gear. Then this is the lay shaft gear. Then through this shaft to these two gears. Okay. Then these two gears are meshing with two driven gears. You can see green colored. And those two green driven gears are on a spline shaft. Means ultimately we want the power to reach to the spline shaft that is the driven shaft means from the engine we want to transfer the power to the spline shaft okay and in between there is a dock clutch you can see and by the help of this dock clutch we can transfer the power of any gear to the spline shaft means it depends on us we can shift this dock clutch right and left so which gears power we want to transfer to the spline shaft that can be decided by this dock clutch okay and what we see over here that all the gears are in meshing conditions always always in meshing conditions only this dock clutch is shifted uh, so that a particular gear power can be transferred to the driven shaft. Okay. So what is the crux of this concept that you can see that there is a spline shaft. Okay. And on which there is a dock clutch and dock clutch has face teeth, the teeth on face as well as there is a driven gear. Driven gear also has teeth on the face. Okay. And dock clutch is complementary fit with this spline shaft. You can see the teeth which are going inside the splines, dock clutch teeth which are going inside the splines. So this dock clutch can easily slide on this spline shaft. However, in case dock clutch rotates, then it will make the spline shaft also rotate because the teeth are going inside and meshing inside the splines. Okay. However, in case we talk about this driven gear, then driven gear is a clearance fit on this spline shaft. So in case power is supplied to this driven gear, it cannot directly go to the spline shaft. Okay. How it can go? In case the dock clutch is meshed with the driven gear by the help of these face teeth. Okay. So first of all, power from the driven gear goes to the dock clutch and dock clutch to this spline shaft. Okay. So this is how the power transfer takes place. Okay. Now, so we will start that how it works. Suppose from the engine, the power is supplied to this engine fixed gear. Then it is supplied to this uh, lay shaft gear. Okay. So in case it is moving in clockwise direction, then it will move in anti-clockwise direction like this. Because when two gears are in machine condition, one gear rotates in one direction, one other in opposite direction. Okay. So from this lay shaft to these two gears and ultimately these are the driven gears. Okay. Now I am showing you by the help of this gear shifting. Okay. So right now it is in neutral. Okay. So what will happen? This is the first gear. So what happened? That power is reaching to both these two gears. However, it was not transferring to the spline shaft because the dock clutch was not shifted. So right now the dock clutch is shifted and the face teeth are meshing with this 
driven gear phase t okay so from this driven gear to the dock clutch and to the spline shaft ultimately power is out so this is the first gear because you can see that this driven gear green car driven gear is of bigger size compared to that of this driver gear which is at the less shaft okay now this is neutral and this is second gear so now the power from this driver gear reaches to this driven gear which is smaller in size than the driver gear then to the dock clutch and to the spline shaft and power is out okay now we will take the third gear a third gear which is the final gear so in that case the spline shaft is directly connected to the engine shaft no need of this lay shaft gear system so shift it toward up and then shifting this dock clutch like this so what will happen in this case whatever power which is fed to this engine shaft will directly go to this spline shaft it will go to this lay shaft also and driven gear also but they will not work on this spline shaft directly the engine power will be supplied to this spline shaft now we'll talk about the reverse gear in reverse gear you can see one more idler gear is used in between okay what happens that in case this driver gear spins in one direction then the idler gear will spin in the opposite direction then that idler gear is ultimately driving the driven gear which will again spin in opposite direction compared to that of idler gear okay so uh, to shift the gear to reverse so we have to move it in downward direction like this okay ultimately toward right now it is engaged so what will happen in this case the power from the engine to this lay shaft ultimately this last driver gear then to this idler gear and then to this driven gear to this dock clutch and then to the spline shaft so in this case the spline shaft will start spinning in opposite direction to that of the direction of rotation of engine shaft okay so i hope by this small lecture you would have understood a lot about how a constant mesh gearbox works thank you